I don't know if I'd use fishy. I don't. I think that the, that a lot of what's happening here is semantics. So, like, you know, he. I, I know that people saw the TMZ video. That's not really unusual. He wasn't back in a walking boot. He is pain free. Um, I think the Sixers would tell you that the language of rebroken is it's not something they they probably use because they said you know less healing than anticipated. So I think they'd probably tell you that. If it wasn't fully healed to begin with, then how could it be rebroken, right? Because like if it's not fully healed and back together, then it was broken initially, so it couldn't be rebroken. It's just still broken. It's it's a lot of semantics. The other problem here is you could get like, and they have gotten some of the best orthopods, some of the best special surgeons in the world to look at the foot, and they're all going to look at this and use different language when describing what exactly the problem is with Embiid. So it's kind of a complicated issue. No doubt about it. Now, do you believe then? Okay, so about what June they say he's going to miss the year. He's going to. He's. Pro- oh, actually, no. He was progressing. He was doing well. He gets the CT scan, less healing than anticipated. At that point, do you think that's where they found out this bone was broken, or could it have happened in the time that he was coming? Because we saw him out in Vegas, kind of walking around and shooting around and. Uh, Bob Cooney said he saw them running up the stairs at the Thomas and Mack Center the other day. I mean, so it's not like this thing seems like it's been bothering him. Could he have rebroken that bone since June? Um, yeah, I mean, this is where we get into that. They need this. To, they need to sort of clear this up for us, right? Because you know, yes, he's been walking around. We saw him on the funky duck, that little scooter thing. That's like kind of like a Segway, but without the handlebars. And he was spotted running up the Thomas and Mack Center. And, like, I can tell you as recently as, like, May, June, he was practicing with guys. And, you know, he was looking pretty good. And they were all sort of raving about him behind the scenes, you know, like him crossing up Maryland and launching three-pointers. But what exactly the problem with the foot is, I again, I would guess if they tell you that it was never fully healed, so it couldn't be quote-unquote rebroken. But because it's such, like... Yes, it's medicine, but it's not. There's no like specific language that everybody uses across the board for these types of injuries. It's really hard to know. Was there like one specific instance? Was it just that it never completely healed, so it was always broken the entire time? It's such a small bone that it could have been broken the entire time, and yet not given him pain as it went on. Uh, John Gonzalez is with us, CSNPhilly.com. Do you think, John, they knew – that he was done when they drafted Okafor then? Yes. I, I think um, from from the way that the situation went down and that they knew that he was going to have to get more tests and that he was likely headed for surgery and all this stuff came out pre-draft, um, I think that from people I've talked to, that they pre-draft were guessing that they were headed towards surgery and post-draft – um, certainly within the last couple of weeks, they definitely knew it. So I think, you know, even what Sam Hickey said, knowing what we knew, I would like to believe that I could still have taken Okafor. Well, they knew they knew that it was almost certain, if not certain at that point, that Embiid was going to be on the shelf. He was going to have another surgery. Okafor is another big. Go ahead and grab him. I think absolutely that that influenced their decision. Yeah, I think uh, we're starting to lean down that road a little bit uh, to think, all right, uh, if this guy doesn't play, this is, uh, you know, plan B here, that this will be our next big guy. And, you know, does that then, if you believe that then, does it concern you about the future of Embiid more? Um, More? No, but I'm already pretty concerned. I think, like, (laughs) when you have a 21-year-old kid who's about to have his second major foot surgery, who's a big man, who's still growing, who's a like a large human being for any age group and specifically for his and specifically for the sport. And then like you think about big men with feet, uh, foot injuries in the past and Yao being the most uh, famous one, how that basically cut his career short. Yeah. I mean, I don't think I could be any less concerned about this. Right. Do you have any inclination Gonzo that Embiid is frustrated where he's not hurt and would like to try to play? So this is an interesting thing. Um, I don't know that he – yeah, I think probably he's a kid and he wants to play and he feels really good, but everything we've heard, because we haven't been able to talk to Embiid, right? Like they don't let kids who haven't played yet talk. So they've like basically held Embiid away from the media. 
but we've been told by Sam Hickey that um, Embiid is frustrated, that it's confusing to him because he doesn't feel any pain. And we've seen him out on the court throwing down dunks, or we've seen him at the end of practices, you know, working out with the team. So I think he probably just naturally, given his age, given the fact that he feels good and wants to play. But I think it's really interesting that when you ask the team what Embiid thinks about this whole situation, that then all of a sudden they go to these more opaque answers. You know, my guess is that maybe he wasn't super thrilled with the idea of having a second surgery. I mean, would you be? I wouldn't be. Not in a million years. No, I guess the next question would be, and I don't know that the Sixers have talked about this. Maybe you've asked people inside the organization, but why was this procedure not his first procedure? So this is also, this is why it's so complicated. So different doctors could look at the foot and come up with different recommendations, right? And I wrote about this in yesterday's piece explaining why this is all so complicated. And when I, after the draft, uh, I had conversations with two well-placed team sources who were trying to walk me through why this was taking so long and why it was complicated. And it's when you have all these doctors, um, none of whom, all of whom are specialists, all of whom are like experts in their field, but none of whom, like, there's no universal language or no universal treatment for this specific injury. So if you go to you and you say, oh, you know, Mike, what do you think? You know, well, I'm going to recommend the Dr. Mike procedure. You come to me and you say, John, what do you think? Well, I'm going to recommend the Dr. John procedure. And, you know, maybe you go to a third doctor and his name Tom. Is Tom. He has the Dr. Tom procedure. And it's all specific to us, and we're all using our own language, and we're all experts in the field. And while we may agree that something must be done, how we term it and what the execution is on that could be radically different. So it's it's murky. It's really complicated. There are a lot of variables. There's no, like, one set thing. It's not like, hey, you need to have your tonsils out. There's one procedure, and we're all in agreement. Right, okay, that makes a lot of sense. And, you know, it, it's inter- there is a guy that I that from this area who played in the NBA who had what Embiid is about to get, same doctor, I believe, is doing it, eight months out playing fine, Asked the same question. Don't know why he didn't get this, but I guess that makes sense that he could go to a different guy and that guy would have told him something potentially different that, oh, no, you don't need this bone graft. You need this. So I guess that makes more sense. What are some things, John, that you think are still not answered that need to be answered? Because this is an organization who have built some trust. They built, you know, some equity with the fans. They've been pretty forward with us. Together we'll build. We stink. We're, we know it. We're telling you this. So I think the fans have been pretty patient, and they because they've been very truthful, does this muddy the waters a little bit? Yeah, I mean, it does. And, I, and what I've said to them uh, is what I wrote in the column, that you know the way that it was explained to me behind the scenes made it easier for me to understand, right? That if you had gone to, all, if you had gone to eight different super top-tier surgeons, you could get eight different opinions, eight different recommendations with eight different languages, right? Like English, obviously, but like in terms of like how they freeze, what's wrong with them and what they would do. So if they had just explained that about how, how, how complicated it is and how there's not even really any consensus on, quote, broken or rebroken or not fully healed or just how all these specialists could, could disagree or at least use different terminology, if they had just expressed it that way, then I think that would get them a lot more leeway. I think people would be more willing to sort of back off and go, okay, this isn't just a simple procedure. It's not like, again, to use the tonsillectomy analogy, it's not like there's one specific thing that you do for this injury and everybody in the medical community is in agreement and everybody uses the same terminology. It's like so much more complicated than that. So in the end, you know, there is a lot of this, that, and the other thing with this, you know, is it broken? Was it, you know, healed? When did he do it? Is he pain-free? All this stuff. But do you think the Sixers handled this situation well? I think they could have handled it better. Uh, That's what I wrote yesterday. I think if they had just said, even if they had just said, look, basically like a, um, a condensed version of what I just said or what I just wrote, if they just said, look, this is really complicated, you could, you could go to eight different or ten different specialists all across the globe, and we did, and still not get a consensus, and they didn't, but now you understand what we're up against. And so we're, like, trying to make the best possible decision for Joel long-term, despite the fact that there's no 
like one unifying belief or overarching um, understanding of what he's going through, then I think people would have said, okay, that's about as good as they could have done. But they didn't really do that. They kind of gave us two kind of murky press releases. And Scott O'Neill went on Twitter today and tried to do some damage control and good for him. Scott's a really good face of the organization and a smart guy. But I think that this could have been handled a little bit better. Yeah, he went all Adam Aaron on us, started hitting the Twitter world up pretty hard there <laughs> and uh, throwing out some stuff. John Gonzalez, the columnist at CSN Philly. John, overall, has this been a successful offseason for the next step in the process? Uh, that's a tough question, right? I mean, I don't know what a successful offseason looks like anymore. They went out there and they got – Okafor and they signed Pierre Jackson and maybe he gets some run and they got Scotty Wilbekin and maybe he like makes the team maybe he doesn't um, I really 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 like I don't think you can be a, like even a half sane person with uh, you know a semi rudimentary understanding of the NBA and not believe that the Stauskas first round pick trade was an absolute steal for them um, so that was a boon good for them and all they had to give up was cap space um, on the whole typical Sixers offseason. I mean, with the exception of the Embiid thing, which is a big, big, big exception. If you're factoring that in, then I guess it wouldn't be successful. All right. Uh, they'll obviously have a little downtime, then training camp, and we'll see if uh, Sam has anything up his sleeve the rest of the time here. John Gonzalez, CSN Philly, uh, with a great piece on the way the Sixers handle the Embiid news. And, uh, John, we always appreciate you jumping on board, man. Thanks so much. Bye, man.